morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. Hope you had a great uh, weekend. Um, we're starting off, you know, very much a bit like uh, where we uh, left it on Friday. And we're talking about health, public health especially, COVID-19 in particular. And uh, my guest this morning is um, Dr. Tui Mebawadu, public health expert. Thank you very much for coming on. Good morning. Okay. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay, so um, uh, here we are. And... Um, the WHO uh, regional virologist has given us, you know, sort of information that's um, a, a, a bit on the dark side. Uh, Dr. Nixi, Nixi Gomede Moletzi, um, uh, to the effect that the South Africa variant of uh, COVID-19 is spreading in 23 countries, th 23 West African countries. Well, thankfully, Nigeria is not in that number yet. But it is as you know, close as Ghana and as close as Togo. So if not for the colonialists and them partitioning up Africa, you never know. All of that could have been one country. Uh, but so here we are. We are limp, we're, we're, it's just the borders separating us. And um, as we all know, uh, borders tend to be porous in Africa, even though we locked our border for more than six months. So I, I just was, I wanted to know how worried should we be because the South African variant is... Um, it, in fact, uh, newspapers called it ruthless. Um, but I, I wondered if that was, if they didn't mean by that that um, it's much more contagious than what we had been used to. So the the South Africa variant, much more dangerous than we've been used to, um, as, as much as that one showed us. Uh, obviously, um, let's let's get to understand how virus change. Let's get it clearly. Virus, what, what you medical people call mutates. Mu 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 virus mutates. Okay. Um, and co co uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus is not going to be an exception. Multiple virus, they change. And how does this happen? Um, virus is just a single strand of other DNA or RNA, the genomic material inside the virus. So what the virus does is to enter human body cells and use the human body cells to copy itself. It's just like you. Uh, you're trying to copy somebody in an exam, you will make mistakes. And if you said, um, I am running, and if you put, I'm um, run, it's a, it makes different things. So, so when doing this copying process, virus makes mistake. Most of the time to the detriment of the virus, because once you make mistake, your ability to function mm -hmm. uh, becomes reduced. So most of them will take, but we see some of them that actually, the mutant strain tend to give them strength. They become stronger in a way. So now we are now having the new lineage of <laughs> mutating virus that is causing havoc everywhere. Um, of course, we started with the, that of the Britain. You know, um, the mutant that saw in, 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 in Britain mm. Mm -hmm. that they found that it was more aggressive, can get transmitted to people faster and even affect younger population. Okay. Okay. In fact, I think there's been a, an instance of the UK variant in fact, it is discovered in Nigeria. More than 60, yes, 60% 60 of the new spike that happened in Britain then, causing lockdown, causing death, causing a uh, close down of the medical uh, facilities. Now, the South Africa one came, okay, and that we so saw the presence of the copying the virus, and that a mistake happened again. This one became easily transmissible. 50% more transmissible than the, the original virus. Unfortunately also, the only vaccine that has been approved for us in Africa by COVAX is not working against the virus. So it became an issue. They had to actually jettison the vaccine. I said, wait a minute, we need to take up step. Good enough now. It's no more spreading rapidly in South mm. Africa. Mm. Mm. But what we've seen is that the, the strain has been exported to other African countries and even around the world. Right now, 20 African countries. I mean, the one of concern for us is that it's one hour away from us. Because if you take a flight from Nigeria to Ghana, it's less than an hour. If you're moving from Togo to Nigeria, it's less than an hour. And then we see a lot of interaction between us and all these West African countries. In fact, you virtually see people that have relatives across the border. So what, what we are seeing in that sense, let's just assume that the chances that the virus is in Nigeria is likely. And then when you look at the flares or what we call the waves that of the viral infection that is happening, 
you can tag some of this into some of these mutants. The South Africa, you know, flare came because of that South Africa mutant. Yeah. Then the, the Brazilian one came because of that mutant there. India is experiencing, you know, a strain um, that they call B1617. Mm -hmm. Okay? A okay. strain that is called B1617 that is actually killing as much as 4,000 people every blessed day. That is and actually shut down India health system. Even people that believe in their God, they were born in the gods. I say, you didn't, you can't protect us. Let's kill you. People were killing their gods in India. So, in this a way, a problem. In, it is a huge problem. So you see those strains pushing the challenges, pushing the boundaries. What do we do? The question is that will our regular drugs now uh, deal with those strains? Will the vaccine protect against those strains? Will this strain kill people more? Are they, this is, are these strains will they now? affect more children, cause more damage, destroy our health system more. Because this information is very essential if we need to take the right step to limit the spread. Now, Nigeria I is facing a lot of gamut of issues. We don't want to add a strain, a violent strain of COVID-19 to our problems. Indeed. That is indeed, that is where now, I, I am. I, I want to lean on your you know, expertise uh, here uh, in relation to something you said that um, here we are, what COVAX has made available to us, the AstraZeneca vaccine, you, you, you said it's not exactly working. Uh, uh, what did you mean by that? Uh, you see, what, what, what are the changes that happen to those viruses? That you see, because the virus has a process of actually human I mean, body. Is it that it's not, it, it wouldn't work for the South Africa variant? The, the, yes, South Africa, okay. yes, it's but not protected. Because, because the South Africa variant, I don't want to use these codes that they are using, but they call it B351. Yeah, B3351, yes. yes. Now, yes. I wonder what we have. Uh, we have a different strain from that. Yeah, we, uh, for us, you know, we've seen the South Africa strain here. Okay, we have. We've seen the London strain. Oh, we, 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 before, I mean, somebody, the, the genomic center at the, the documented the London strain yesterday, the London strain then. And then we have the strain we had on, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, they're even talking about Nigeria strain now. You know, so in the Nigeria strain now, they're talking about Nigeria strain. So now the, the challenge essentially is this. Do we, can we cope with another strain? Now, because what happened is that some strain, after they found out that people with the original strain of the virus haven't contacted, can, haven't contacted South Africa strain, can still pick another COVID infection. So it becomes a real issue because does it help to pick another, inf another strain of infection? Does it affect the drugs we're using? Does it affect the vaccine? How well can it affect the younger or older generation? How much death can it cause? What other complications can, can arise from it? So all this has become necessary if sincerely we need to deal, um, you know, protect ourselves, protect ourselves as it were. against this virus. Um, now, it seems that the most logical thing is that we know what we have, hopefully, uh, and we don't want anything else to be introduced, uh, a wild strain or, a, a, you know, a strange strain, uh, this B3351, a.k.a. South Africa variant. Uh, that we, we, we don't want that in here. The, you've already told us it's more virulent, uh, it's, it, it's more catching. Uh, so it seems that the borders, we would have to police the borders, and our borders are thought to be porous. Um, so this is one of those big challenges. Even as the federal government has said that we have heard this and we're going to work on it, uh, immigration, customs, and other security agencies, you know, they, they know, and so they're going to be working at it. I, I don't know. How, how, how optimistic are you that um, we can do all that needs to be done uh, so that we don't have more than we actually have at the moment? Because we need to be, quote-unquote, bloody-minded about allowing people in, uh, it would uh, seem to occur to me. Uh, well, I, I, as much, of course, we know the history of our borders. You know, um, if small arms that are visible, okay, that you can see, if cars that you can see, if bags of rice that you can see can flow across your border seamlessly. Whole trailers. Can, you can flow you know, across, yes, with petroleum. petroleum. Can flow Petrol across trailers. your border seamlessly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Virus are not seen now. Why would this one just jump easily? I mean, let's leave at the border alone. Okay, well, for the sake of saying that you're doing something, nice, okay, you are protecting the border. No wahala. No, but the point is that we must move to the second and third level of protection. 
The second level of protection is the capability of the laboratory to pick these strains. Okay? Now, because let, 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 let's, be, let's be frank. With each mutation, with each change, because the, 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 it's a molecular biology, it's a really deep level of biology for you to do a test, maybe a PCR, and say that this is COVID-19. Mm -hmm. If the if the thing mutates and you don't have the means of picking at this COVID-19, it may escape. So you need to enhance the capacity of the laboratory. They need to pick um, different COVID samples and check whether we are seeing mutation either in the the spike protein or anything at all. You need to do that. So you have to up, you know raise up the standard of your laboratory. How do you raise the standard of the laboratary human resources equipment? So I, I okay? imagine, I, I imagine that that's the that's the first level of vigilance. Okay. I, I, I've left the border now. Yes. So okay, they, they say some of them have entered. So pick. The earlier you pick, the more you're able to actually deal. Okay, but our, the, our agencies have been having some success with that because I was looking at the Lagos State report on this whole matter about tracing, contact tracing and that kind of no, thing. It's not contact tracing I'm saying now. You see, now, okay, you've traced contact, you've taken sample. You took the sample to laboratory. The laboratory must be equipped enough to be able to pick to do what we call gene sequencing. Do we have those? Don't don't uh -huh. don't we have those? Because um, <laughs> okay, now to do gene sequencing, yeah, we are, we have genomic. Some I think so, there's a place in there or so that, but again, that is not sufficient. Okay, uh, okay, um, okay. So we must be able to be up to date with the game of sequencing those genes and find out whether we're having variants or mutant or strain as the case may be okay so that's the first level of protection so human resources retrain them collaborate equip centers to do that and get your sample as, as varied as possible the second level of um, what i call vigilance we need to do we've left like i said we've left the border now it's individual vigilance exactly and i'm going to come back it's to that individual vigilance doctor let me come back to that <laughs> but let me let, let me um let me also speak to your uh, colleague, uh, Dr. Oluchi Ubani, uh, public health expert. Uh, she's reaching us from, is it Kaduna or, or, or Abuja? Good morning, Abuja. Dr. Ubani. Abuja. Good morning. Good morning. It's Abuja. Yes. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, so uh, w w we're quite worried. Uh, uh, are we overdoing it or should we uh, be uh, about the South Africa variant uh, spreading in 23 countries? Mercifully, Nigeria is not among them, but they say it's a, it's a virulent one, it's much more catching, and uh, it can say sort of, for, for people like us, ordinary, you know, laymen, uh, we just say it, it can move with speed. Uh, are, you, are you concerned about, th as concerned about that, or are we getting some of it wrong here? Okay, um, firstly, thank you so much for the question. Firstly, viruses with their nature, um, you know, they, they come into the host. Um, cell and then they take charge of the DNA and they try to imitate and you know copy the genetic structure of the human being. So as for every African will have a little bit of a um, particular DNA structure or strand that will be similar. So hence the widespread, the easy. So the the virus detects something similar in this in this host cell and you know uses that as um, a force to move on and keep multiplying. So viruses, they get into your system, they commandeer it, and they now start using the DNA and other um, cells and genetic structures to reproduce themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's very possible that that's why there's that easy spread in Africa, because there must be, there's a similar strand. Now the concern is Nigeria too, we Nigerians, for us to be called Nigerians, our genetic structure is affected by our environment and so many other things, hereditary factors. So also we will have our own strand and the, the one from South Africa, there will be similarities, they will blend and so on and the circle continues. So my major concern is now it has boiled down to, oh, we've been hearing this strand in the UK, we're hearing this strand in China. That means it's time for us to produce what will work for us here in Nigeria. Just like this uh, speaker, the earlier speaker, what he said is, from, is really on point. It's time for us to go into our research institute and start doing tests to find out what is that peculiar thing. In, in Nigeria, we don't really, I've not really heard much of us treating based on genetics. So it's time for us to start using genetics to treat, having to understand 
genetic structures of Nigerians, maybe those in a certain environment, maybe in a certain region might be different from the other. Once we understand our genetic structure, it will help us to draft out or come up with something to solve our, our problem. Because the vaccine that has been given from the different studies I've been listening to CDC following up, there's people, they're just taking, you know, let's just take um, this, um, vaccines for prevention. Nobody is sure of how effective or how preventive it will be. So I think it's you know, for uh, us uh, Sorry, Dr. Obani. Dr. Obani, that, that's, that's a challenge yeah. right there. Um, because a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of public um, information that the right thing to do is to take the vaccine. If you are scared about that, um, the risks, um, you know, outweigh. I mean, the, the risk of not taking it outweigh the risk of taking it. So people are being persuaded to consider it very, very, very seriously. Um, but the how 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 well do you think, or do uh, how well do, would does the AstraZeneca um, vaccine uh, work? Because we've begun, we're beginning to hear that somehow. AstraZeneca is a bit like the poor cousin of um, these other vaccines. Give me your impression. Either. Give me your impression on that. Okay. okay, from research is done and from studies information I gathered, Pfizer, um, according to the um, studies, they said Pfizer um, helps prevent 90%. Then AstraZeneca is 60%. And AstraZeneca is more accessible. Pfizer, according to the efficacy, is more expensive. Mm -hmm. But taking it helps to build your immune system. Okay. Taking it helps to build your immune system. Just like before now, we've been taking vaccines. You have the polio vaccines. You have the hepatitis vaccines. You have the vaccines that prevent one from getting um, cervical cancer for the women. So um, you take them to boost your immune system. You have vaccines for chicken pox, smallpox, and the rest of them. But you still need your immune system to be strong because if your immune system is not, because these viruses are seen to attack the immune system, they go in there and they take charge. There are different types of viruses, and this COVID 19 virus has been seen to be very um, efficacious and it goes out and it takes charge. So, I would advise everyone to take the vaccine because you're protecting your system. But most people, they have this misconception oh, once I take the vaccine, then I'm free. No, you have to still take precaution. I always give, um, tell my patients and those that come across, so it's just like taking um, drugs for malaria and then you still stay in a place where there's mosquitoes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, when, you, when you take, when you take um, the vaccines, you still protect yourself. And mm. you know, with the way Africa is, people are moving around. You don't know where someone has been for the last few days. You don't yeah. know who you will meet. Mm. So it's good we take charge of our system. Prevention, they say, is better than cure. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Mebaudu, uh, most of us who have actually received the vaccine um, have taken just the first dose, and it's a two days, it's a two dose thing. Um, there are people who are actually, you know, beginning to toy with the idea because after they are taking it, then you begin to hear all sorts of stuff like um, the fact that you have got a vaccine does not mean that you you can't catch COVID, uh, uh, etc., and that kind of a thing. Um, what, what would be the danger if you took the first dose and for some reason you decide that, you know what, I, I'm not, some haven't even taken the first dose. Those that have taken the first dose are considering that, do I really need the second dose? Considering that they say it's no different, my situation is much actually uh, not much different um, from if I hadn't taken the. Um, who says so? Who says your situation is not much different? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Again, let, let me just. No, because uh, let me, they, let me, they, they're deriving that from the from, uh, from the fact that the fact that you have been vaccinated doesn't mean you won't catch. You can't catch. No, I won't say won't. You can't catch COVID nineteen. For now, it's not a life vaccine. Now, the vaccine that once you take, you completely do this for life. The coronavirus um, family. It's not like that. Okay. Flu is caused by coronavirus. You know, we've seen uh, even bird so flu. Yeah. We're going to continue it's to. We're going to be taking boosters now, wait, along the line. Let, 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 I just want to relate it to the challenges we're having. Now, the key factors that tend to drive mutant strains of viruses are the following. If you had large number of people being infected with the virus, for instance, you look at um, a country, I won't mention Nigeria, you look at a country, maybe 100 million people, as much as 80 million of them have been infected with the virus, that gives chance, higher chance for mutation to occur. So it is important for you to limit 
the number of your infection. The second thing is that how long does the infection stay in the body of that person? Somebody is getting chronically ill, the virus is hanging out in the system for three months, two months, and that kind of thing. The chance of mutation then comes up. Then the, if, you are, if you stay in an enclosure, mm -hmm. you know, an enclosure well of you are interacting, mm. as the virus jump from one person to another and use the body um, cells to reproduce itself, the chance of mutation is also high. So, and then, the, of course, our ecosystem can also push from there. So, it is important that even the use of vaccine, because you, if you're looking at way to limit mutation, that is that you have to cut short the transmissibility of that virus. At least for the virus to jump from, you have to cut it short. What the vaccine does is, one, reduce severity of infection in you, so it's going to cut the time you're going to fall sick. So it's going to reduce mutation. Then prevent some of you, you know, even for, for, for some people from catching the virus. That means that one again is going to prevent mutation. Now, your social distance, your face mask, your hand okay. wash will prevent all an, of these are the personal so aspects Dr. Obani was referring yes, to. It will reduce the rate of the infection you are going to have. So for us, as this thing is evolving and we're not having the deeper understanding yet, the best thing if you take the, even if the vaccine is sixty percent effective, mm. take it. It's an add-on for you, okay. at least. But now, come back to your question: If you take the first vaccine and you're not taking the rest, it is not good because if you want to ramp up vaccination, we must make it as short as possible because these are the things that also tend to limit mutation and, put, and, and let you reach the what we call the herd immunity. Yes, six months. Yeah, they said that maybe the first one you, you've taken a long lab at six months, but. You know, after this one, what happens? Mm. So we, we shouldn't be able to, we shouldn't allow another mutant strain to develop by us not completing the vaccination. So it is important, strategically, that the government must ensure. If you, now, another challenge is that... Sorry, sir. You're talking about the government, but um, you, you also spoke about our personal responsibility, and Dr. Obani also brought that uh, matter up to all these, mm. these social aspects, the non-pharmaceutical mm. aspects of, of, of mm. this thing. I, I would wager that Nigerians have sort of slowed down a bit mm -hmm. on, on the sense of urgency that they used to have. They are, they are, they are being confronted with a lot of problems. It's, a, it's going to take a lot of uh, special thinking for you to have all the things happening in the, in the public space. And then the thing you want to talk is you have to cover your nose. But, you know, you have to comp continue the campaign. We have to emphasize, we have to, you know, lay down that, listen, we don't want to add... COVID-19 to um, insurgency, bad tree, and poverty going on in the country. <laughs> Let's just take one. Let's just have control of that one. And the only way we can have control, I've said is that you have to re revert back to individual person acting specifically to protect his life. You know, like I've always said here, it's not about pandering to some funny thinking, magical thinking, I hope the thing will go away. Indians were killing their, they are killing their gods now, the gods that couldn't protect them against well, coronavirus. Well, well. We had killed smallpox god in this western part of Nigeria because there was a god that was assigned to smallpox those days. Vaccination killed the, the god. So what are we talking about? We, we should be able to straighten our thinking. Please, guys, protect yourself. Okay. Behave responsibly. Uh, uh, Dr. Obani, you, you, you mentioned, um, you, you ended when you spoke last on the responsibility, our personal responsibility in all of this. As the scientists and the doctors are doing all that they can, we'll be hearing about that through WHO, our governments, public health experts, and all of that. But in the meantime, uh, you, you seem to say that it's not inconsiderable. The 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 um, you know our immune system is not an inconsiderable part of that. Now, how how do, just refresh our memories because people should actually know. People are taking a lot of stuff, you know, um, by way of vitamins and all of those things. So what is the absolute minimum? Because the fear now is that all of these things we're talking about, you know, enhancing our immune system, is really more in the urban areas and with the educated elite. Uh, but uh, the rest of us who happen to be in the majority might not know about that. So what would be the simplest way that you would suggest when it comes to doing your best for your immune system? Okay, so our immune system is just like immune with the word immune, it protects us from getting infected. It, it, the, the part of the body system that protects when viruses, sicknesses come around, it stands like soldiers. If I'm to explain it to a six year old soldier. So what can you do? Eating rice, not 
um, eating right is essential because your body needs that food to, to grow, needs the, the food to supply its nutrients for did, different did, parts did of the Did you say body. rice? Right. Eating right. 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 Oh, okay. Right. Eating right. Okay. Right. Okay. Yes. Not um, taking too much carbohydrate or too much of this, just a balanced diet. Then if we can reduce, um, then exercising, exercising helps. Then there are particular, now there are particular, you have different supplements now that are coming up. Before anybody goes to take any drug, it's good you meet your um, medical practitioner as, as an advice from your doctor. Because no matter how good drugs are, they are still chemicals. So there might be a, a certain dosage for a certain weight. In Nigeria, we don't really go with weight, but weight is important. A certain age, a certain someone predisposed, having an underlying um, problem, someone mm -hmm. taking a particular mm -hmm. medication, the combination. So it's advisable that we, before you go take any drug, you should be prescribed from, by your doctor. And then when you're taking supplements as prescribed by your doctor, before you go to refill, you have to contact your doctor once again to ask, oh, should I go ahead to get this? Then, apart from eating right, then in the environment, we should maintain neatness. You know, pollutions here and there, we should maintain neatness. Then, please, we should disabuse our minds. Instead of making um, theories that have no facts with them, it's better we study. The internet is everywhere now. We can go and listen to these things for ourselves. Read about what is this all about. Get information and seek the right advice. Staying okay. there and taking nothing. Okay, look at what happened in India. It's believed, like in Nigeria, most practitioners, when they want to refer you out, they refer to India. But see what is happening in India. Probably because of some misconceptions. You know, as we had our biases here in Nigeria, they also had their own biases over there. But look at what is costing them. Let us not get to a point. I don't believe and I don't pray we get to a point where we have um, the kind of problems they're having right now. So it's good everyone should take responsibility. You have that sole obligation to yourself. Mm -hmm. Take responsibility okay. and live right. Okay. Um, uh, now, Dr. Mebaadu, continuing on the self-help that usually doctors advise against self-help, but in this context, people are saying that, no, 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 you have to put your shoulder to the wheel too, while all the, the, this is one exception. Now, um, as Dr. Bani was saying that you need to consult with your physician and all of that, um, not very many Nigerians do that. They, they go by uh, word of mouth and what is trending at the moment. And as you know, most Nigerians, um, at least I think most Nigerians have heard that for your immune system, uh, they're thinking of vitamin C, they're thinking of vitamin D, they're thinking of zinc, those three. There might be others, but people are thinking that those three. Uh, in the absence of consulting with your physician before actually launching your, your self-treatment, as uh, Dr. Bani has said, uh, is there anything that one needs to know about that sort of generic idea that, you know, give yourself some vitamin D. You can't stay in the sun all the time that, to get all the vitamin D that you need out of it. So people are taking supplements for vitamin D. They're taking for vitamin C, which they know from primary, well, you know, maybe from one and four, two. They know that oranges and all of that. So they're taking supplements in that way. All those things, in the light of what Dr. Bani said, that you should normally consult with a physician, are people still being safe? Well, I, again, um, let's appreciate the fact that there could be uh, what we call hypervitamins or some of those vitamins that we're taking. Um, we don't just launch onto drugs and just swallow them anyhow. Um, but having said that, um, it's important if you look at your environment, um, the way you live in your environment, if you look at um, the diet you take, if you look at the rest you take and you know and your exercise, you can actually balance your body. Uh, even the simple food that is available in, 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 our, area, in our local area. What I am expecting, at least from the different Ministry of Health at the mm -hmm. local level, at the, I'm talking about the primary health care centers, in their environment, I'm sure they should have a nutrition clinic where they can disseminate information about the quality of food in their environment and how to eat portion right there. That, okay. that would be cheaper. Because this is already being done, yeah. as I imagine, with um, uh, pregnant women. Uh, yeah, 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 it's not just pregnant pre women. Pre you, know, you do to pregnant women, uh -huh. you do to small children, and you do to the public. Because the primary health care is a localized thing. You're supposed to take charge of the health in that environment. 
put posters around in the language they understand. Push pictorial things around in the language they understand. Well, so that is being done at the moment, but perhaps not in uh, that. You wish how many how many public health care centers? Out of 200,000 we have in Nigeria, less than 10 of them are functioning. You cannot, you see, the, you, we, we tend to assume that Lagos is the whole of Nigeria. There are quite a lot of issues, a lot of issues concerning, you know, the health care, you know, when you move out of Lagos. Even out of Lagos, there are a lot of distress happening to the health system. We need to rebuild those things, okay? Mm. okay. But for me, because we cannot, uh, we cannot have access to doctors and nurses mm. as I want, let's ask locally in terms of our environment, in terms of the diet, in terms of when we rest and sleep. And then, of course, this kind of continuous education will help people to even easily raise their immune system before Strength they start getting to the issue of you saying that I have to use uh, vitamin C, I have to use vitamin E. Those things are expensive. People that are working that cannot get 299 exactly. a day. Where, where the, would they go to get money to buy those that's things? The so, um, uh, Mazi Okora, so, for good morning, sir, and thank you for holding on. Go ahead now, please. Yes, sir. Mazi, Mazi Okorafo. Good morning, sir. Okay. Go ahead now, please. Uh, good morning, doctor. Good morning, Mazi. Uh, uh, doctor, I want to find out from you. How many molecular scientists <laughs> do we have in Nigeria? I'm asking this question because I'm going to ask Dr. Bali too. Like today in Nigeria, if you check the statistics of doctors in America, UK, 70% of them are Nigerians. Now, presently today, Nigeria, we are still hoping to get drugs or vaccine from outside the country, which is not healthy. Now, if you look at the Madagascar product they brought to Nigeria, 70% of the, uh, the, 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 the ingredients are purely produced in all parts of Nigeria. Now, we were told that Nigerian people have started producing, that NASA says they are working and processing it. How many months will it take or years? Because you see the Pfizer products and, the, and, and anything we call it that we have in Nigeria today from other countries, those things didn't take up to three to four months. Why is Nigerian products still being delayed? Hmm. Because hmm. the way we are moving, between now and the end of December, up to 10% of Nigeria will not get that this very bad thing we are talking. Okay. Let us face reality and say the truth. E, uh, uh, so automatically we have to look back, think what we are going to produce in Nigeria in order to do what? To solve and save our own situation instead of depending on outside the country. Oh, okay. And uh, immunity. You have know very well that the immunity system we are talking about in Nigeria, now. People are talking about poverty. I agree, there is poverty, but not there. Uh, if you believe in God, there is no poverty, unless you don't believe in God. But what do we do now? Because Nigeria needs something that will be taken to make sure people are going to Please, can you help us? Okay. Help us, the we, the listeners. Okay. As we see, we watch us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mazi. And, um, uh, what, what, you know, uh, Mazi, the question you, you asked was sort of uh, brought, brought Friday back. Uh, because Dr. Bani and uh, myself and Dr. Uh, Mebaudu, on Friday, we were talking about this whole question of um, the World Trade Organization seeking to uh, lift the intellectual property rights uh, on the vaccines so that countries could manufacture it themselves. Now, it's related to what Mazio Kurafo was asking because um, that the, a Nigerian answer to this. First of all, give me your thoughts on that very notion, that very idea, Dr. Obani, um, that um, we could come up with something. When you, uh, I'm asking this question because we hear how rigorous the testing is, how many people have come together to, you know, to really expand the testing uh, beyond, um, you know, local samples. How, what do you think um, that about the whole question of Nigeria, for example, coming up with a solution as Madagascar uh, indeed did come up and submitted some bottles, I believe, to um, the presidency. What do you think about those uh, particular routes? Okay, so like I stated earlier, with the new strains and the mutations, I think it's time we, we start um, fortifying our research institute. We can even get our medical professionals that are outside the country to come with their expertise and they come up with something. They, they should be fully funded, the government should fund them, and they should be confident enough to, to say, oh, this thing we are working on, we have a solution. Now, 
from the different um, cases of um, COVID-19 and uh, patients that have been infected with COVID-19, they test it on them and they try it out. You know that this different ways of testing them is time. I think it's time for us to start looking for something locally to produce. Number one, it to be more accessible to Nigerians. And number two, we can vouch for what it's all about. We can say, oh, this is the outcome. This is what is expected. This is the side effect. We'll be able to we'll be sure. I, I believe we should have, I don't know the statistics of, um, according to what Mazi said, the professionals in that area in genetics, because in Nigeria, I don't really, I've not really, I'm not so conversant. I'm not, I've not really seen much about being treating people due to genetics. But I think we should start bearing into that area. Okay. Like I'm, 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 an I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna there are issues in that area. I, I, I'm going to pick up on it um, um, uh, later, but um, good morning, uh, Madam Ada. Uh, in Hello. Just. Yes, Ada. Uh, Ada from Jose. Okay, madam. Good, good morning. Go good ahead, morning, please. Mr. Yuri. Good, good morning, Mr. Uh, Yuri. Good morning, Dr. Chui and uh, good Dr. Morning. Ubani. Ubani. Huh. Thank you. Good morning. Um, uh, all these uh, things about the things referring to Ghana and so on that is very close to us. Huh. It's not a joke, it's worrisome. Because we have too many Nigerians living there. Uh, especially Ghana, with all these associations with the uh, Nigerian businessmen there, and some of them want to come back, we just have to be proactive than being reactive. If you want it to be a disaster, if it, if it comes into Nigeria, is that first of all, we will be living in self denial. You will be hearing things like a strange disease, unknown disease, and all that. And then when we talk about physicians, the doctors there, in the, the, the doctors talk, talking to us. You know, the way they talk about these physicians, I just have a physician, they think we are like other clients. We have we don't have a robust health insurance scheme. You know, so because people are made to pay from their pocket, most people don't talk about physicians in Nigeria. They go for self help. So these are things we have to look at, you know. So my own my own uh, advice is that we should take responsibility by still observing those non commercial uh, protocols. And again, I want to find out Dr. Tui and uh, Dr. Bani. This Johnson and Johnson, that is one dose. You know, I said it that first time that it is better to go for that one dose. Like what is happening now? Like uh, you're in now, you're in, you're taking uh, one dose of Sabenica, uh, and then Zeneca. and then with all these things that is happening now, I don't even know whether you, even you, there, you want to even go for the second dose of it. I'll try my best. I'll try my best. Because we are able to, we are able to, we are able to even uh, see. It. So just now, just that is one dose. Is it more effective than Elsa, uh, the Zeneca? Now your, your guest there, can they, do they know that much? And just Please, before you go, and, and just before you go, Ada, have you taken the um, AstraZeneca at all? Did I see you to take? <laughs> they, 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 they said we are both for just like and you know, from the outset, from the outset, you need to remember. Oh, you said to me, I told you from the outset that I will prefer that um, one dose. Yes. I resent the problem. I look at it now. It has happened. Yes. I think I, 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 I really prophesied it correctly. It is unfortunate for this country. We have too many problems already. All right, then. But that's like, you know, let's argue about this country. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Ada. Um, uh, now, uh, Mazi, first of all, started the question. Uh, and I believe that we have world class scientists in Nigeria. I, you know, I, I just believe that because um, I think it was Mazi who prefaced his remarks by saying that we have them wherever you have medical experts anywhere in the world, it's very, very likely you will find some Nigerians among them. So we do have all these, um, we, we do have these specialists. But uh, uh, do you think we can operate at a level where the fellow, your fellow scientists around the world, uh, because that was one of the defenses, if that is what to call it, that um, Big Pharma uh, brought up with the WTO idea of uh, uh, lifting intellectual property rights so that um, other countries could manufacture. They were very, very concerned about standards because they said the standards are cutting edge, they're, they're exceedingly high, as needs to be, before somebody will say, take this out into the world. Uh, do you think we can we can do that as African scientists, since African scientists are also contributing to this very debate. Well, again, let me put it this way. The fact is simple that we can always raise an African scientist, an African medical doctor, to a world standard. But to raise somebody to a world standard requires training, environment that is conducive, equipment that mm -hmm. are appropriate, okay? 
and that ongoing training. Okay. Um, equipment, we don't have equipment that are appropriate. We don't have environment that is conducive. We don't even have who is going to train us. So what okay? do we have? We have now. The... We're, we're just you see, I, I, like science, including medicine, is evolving rapidly. You see, even at, in some countries now, you have clinicians who is going to look at your, and then you have molecular physicians who will look at the molecular level of what is happening. That was exactly. the one Mazi Okora you was interested so, in. How many so, of those do we have? And I, I, I saw I, I, that I, I, both I, you and Dr. Ogani sort of smiled uh, again, when, when Mazi asked that question. How many doctors do you have in Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> when you are talking about molecular, how many doctors do you have in Nigeria? Is it, is it the 30 something thousand or 40 thousand doctors that you want to go and bring molecular out of them? Uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Yakub, good morning sir. Thank you for holding on. <coughs> Excuse me, she's very good, good morning, sir. Uh, Dr. Good morning. Good morning. And then the other, then the doctor on the other side. Dr. Ogani. Dr. Ogani, sorry. Good morning, good morning sir. Uh, she's very, I think uh, I, I go with the uh, analogy of uh, the man calling for Maru Shuku. Uh, if, he, if he has a very valid question, how many molecular sciences we have in this country? If we have, the question is that is Nigerian government government ready to invest in them in order for them to give us what we really need? You know what I'm afraid now is that now this virus, a very bad virus, this idiot virus in, in coast, <laughs> is changing is changing style. <laughs> now that the, the, the virus now changing style in South Africa now, and then the thing is deadly. And then I was, I was so skeptical when Chibiori was mentioned that the uh, WHO was not mentioned in Nigeria among the uh, West Africans this uh, new virus is. Because Nigeria... But it is in Ghana and, and Togo. Yes, Chibiori, I, I'm not sure. God forbid. He's only, he's only uh, joking that God is a Nigerian. Because the issue is that Nigeria is traveling a lot. Chibiori, there in Ghana, Ghana that is very close to us. But Togo that is very close to us. And there's so many, many Nigerians uh, what there. Is the, what is the population of Togo and Ghana? Some kind of Nigeria, we, are, we, we, we have the population. But the issue is this, Chibiori. We should be able to do what Dr. Uh, uh, the other doctor, Dr. Uh, the other doctor said earlier. Yeah. That whatever we can do to make sure that we get our own vaccine, let's just invest it in it. But my question goes to Dr. May now. The 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 vaccine that Chibiori have took, I'm planning to take my own after the Ramadan fasting. Now now Chibiori have took one dose now, and then you need to take the the other dose. And then the, the, the other doctor says that the Pfizer product is, is more, 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 90 percent safe than the other one that the children, the, the, Dr. Um, Shibiori took. Now, if Dr. Shibiori did not see the, the, this very particular vaccine that he took, and then, can he take uh, the Pfizer product in order to complete the dose? Can he go fast, 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 can he take the two? Instead of him taking this one, can you repeat to take the Pfizer product? Okay. He does not see the astrotonic capacity again. Uh, That's a good point. I, I see. Thank you very much. Uh, and also, the fact that doctors are using a percentage of 60 uh, in terms of efficacy. So, if, uh, if I can't get the second dose of that, uh, maybe if I see Johnson and Johnson, my, my, I just take it. My, my brother, please take, go and take your vaccine. If it's just 60%, you mm. have protection. You mm. have some mm. protection. Mm -hmm. It's better uh, than not, yeah, getting, not it. getting it at all. Uh, then, the, okay, the question yeah, is that, uh, you can let go of the line now. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the second question is that can you mix vaccines? We have not gotten to that stage. We, we, we prefer you to take this straight, straight line of vaccines mm. because the development of the vaccines are different. Some is from adenovirus, some um, mRNA vaccines. So combining so vaccines, started, combining there. vaccine is not what we still not push now. Now we, we can decide that so that in this part of Lagos. I'm going to give Johnson and Johnson. In this other part, I'm going to give AstraZeneca. Okay. But we don't even have the vaccine mix. Nigeria, we had that Nigeria, you know, um, is negotiating to, pre to procure about 19 million doses of uh, uh, Johnson and Johnson. Well, until it gets here, mm -hmm. then if then you don't go and look for a place, a state or area, go and give that. Unless you know, and then f more importantly, you have to have the data. You have to follow exactly. up and be able to see how effective those things are. And so you, know, you can't mix vaccines. Yeah, yeah. You know, what what you do, yes, what you and need to do for now is not advisable. Okay. What you need to do is actually strengthen your non-pharmaceutical profession. Be responsible. Our, take your our, take charge. Our, our authorities, uh, Doctor Bani, our authorities sort of um, 
I know that, in fact, it's like a rhetorical question. You have I to know, say it over I, and over. I, I know that it will not be the case, but I was, I was going to say our, 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 our authority is sort of relaxing a bit too, because I'm hearing that um, um, what are these specialist centers that they set up um, um, for, for, for As, isolation centers? Uh, isolation centers. I understand that, um, I think, I, I was reading somewhere that in Lagos here, which is an epicenter, the um, Commissioner for Information was quoted as saying that um, it's just one that they have left, simply because there are no more people, uh, you know, uh, there are no more takers, so to speak. Um, so, uh, it's like, are we also now sort of relaxing a bit uh, as we're closing down some of those centers? Um, and um, are, are we in order? Okay, so, um, uh, Dr. Obani, uh, ap I apologize. Could, yes, I just, uh, could I just take a call that just came in from the UK and then you, you answer as it were compositely. Okay. Good morning, okay. Mr. Joseph okay. in the UK. Yes, good morning. My name is Joseph um, Carroll. We're actually calling from Scotland, UK. Mr. Carroll, we... To confirm okay. To yeah. I want to confirm to you first to the fact that I've had my vaccine, the first one, about um, a month and a half ago, still waiting for the second dose, still feeling safe. But one thing one of the doctors said here, which I want to point out, is everybody's pointing to the federal government, thinking the federal government fixes everything. But he mentioned the primary health centers, which is domiciled in the um, local government and the state government. Yes. They are not doing much, but everybody's thinking, why do we fix everything from Abuja? Let our <laughs> governors and our local authorities yeah, wake up and yes. do their job so that we can have the handshake from the federal government and we can have a just and safe society. And lastly, it is not right for us all the time to talk down Nigeria. To think that when we, when we come out and say oh, nothing is working in Nigeria, a lot of things are working, we just need to have the proper handshake. Thank Indeed. you. You're doing a great job. God bless you. Well, thank you very much uh, for calling in. Okay, Dr. Obani, over to you now. Okay, so to our, um, there's something, Ada, uh, before I continue with the question, there's something Ada. Uh, call her from Josh Ada. Yes. Yeah, so she was talking about why Pfizer is not available. So for now, the funding, the Pfizer is quite expensive, but AstraZeneca will still do the job. So the one accessible to you, you go for it. There, there are registrations now. You have to sign up on the website, and then they give you a center closest to you, and then you do it. So I advise everyone should to do that. Then to answer the question, even when the COVID-19, when the news of the COVID-19 um, pandemic was, you know, when the, it was That's on the right. hot topic, mm -hmm. very hot, the system in places like Lagos, um, the preparation in places like Lagos, Abuja, and some cities is not the same everywhere. I spoke to colleagues in most parts of the nation. So if there's this uniformity, if what is gotten in Lagos can be gotten in Kaduna, can be gotten in Abia State, can be gotten in Ebo State, can be gotten in Delta, I think things will work out. I think every, most people, according to different, um, it was just for show. People don't really understand how in-depth and important it is. So this boils down to what our last caller said, the state government, there are primary health care centers. These primary health care centers are built. The National Primary Health um, Development Agency, from, from, for different primary health centers I have visited so far, they are doing well, they are trying their best, they are supplying drugs. So if these primary health care centers, they have someone in charge, when you have um, lack of anything, you have to report back to so um, the person in charge of the state, you inform the state government. Most state governors showed concern and gave support. So okay. I think we should, you know, try to replicate. When we see what is going on, when we um, see what is going on in a particular state, you repli try to replicate as much as you can mm -hmm. in your own state. You might not do it as big as the other state, but do what you can control. Then Nigeria has the, um, uh, 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 we have the um, intellectual capacity. So if, our, if we could procure some of this equipment because okay what are the criteria to say okay if we produce a vaccine it can be accepted what are the criteria we try to meet them we might not have it everywhere some of these centers and do our best to meet those I criteria i got to interrupt yes, you dr Obani. i'm someone. so sorry i got yes. to interrupt you uh, good morning kenneth uh, calling in from the uk kenneth, good morning uh, good, good morning thank you for calling in yes thank you um, I just wanted to contribute to your program. Sure, sure. 
I've been listening carefully to it. Um, I'm a Nigerian. Um, I live in the UK. I just came back from Nigeria about uh, two weeks ago. I looked at um, the way we handle things in Nigeria. To be fair to us, we are not ready for advancement. Now, we're talking about COVID. Uh, Nigerian government, from what I've observed and see, First of all, I know Buhari is not competent to rule that country, but that's not the issue for today. Now, when the Nigerian government heard about the vaccine is um, available, they, they ordered a few thousands. And when it came to Nigeria, in the UK, for example, in America, in the European countries, they, give, they administer the priority list and the, um, the aged people. And, and the vulnerable people who have medical conditions. Guess what Nigerians did? The, the ministers, the president, the senators, the governors, they went to go and rush and take it. Well, they, well, I, 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 Kenneth, I can also add that without prejudice to what you've just said, yes, they did that by way of perhaps encouraging the people, but at the individual centers, the, what you've just said was indeed followed. The aged, the vulnerable, the frontline workers, those were first priorities. Okay. Yeah, I just thought I should add that, that you know, right. we didn't completely mess it up. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's a nice, yeah, that's a nice one. What I mean is, if you look at sharing the natural, um, the, the nation's resources, for example, looking after our people. Yes. Nigerian government don't look after their citizens. Oh, oh, oh okay. And that is why you see killing everywhere nobody cares about ordinary man on the street oh, 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 nobody oh, oh, cares oh, oh, all right thank you very much for calling in kenneth so really appreciate your call but we're fast running um out of time and so um i think what i'll do is i need to thank uh dr oluchi ubani public health expert you know calling you know reaching us from abuja thank you very much uh for calling uh, for joining the program this morning dr ubani we appreciate your time and your insights you know and um, Dr. Mebaudu, just in the last one minute or so, um, I, I think this is pointing to our responsibility as individuals to take care of ourselves and not leave everything to government. And that will include our attitude to our environment, which I think both Dr. Lucci and your good self, uh, you sort of emphasize. I just hope it cottons on. Uh, because driving around town on weekends, you see that things are really back to the way it used to be. Yet we were told at that time that the new normal is never going to be like it was before. But Lagos is, you know, you know as far as Lagos mm -hmm. is concerned, you see that the, the, um, the party venues, the back in business. Uh, Lagos, is, Lagos is supposed to be a bit fair. When you uh, drive out of Lagos or move out of Lagos, uh, you're having a face mask. They, you, you look so strange. They, yeah. um, one of my uh, people in a university environment mm -hmm. told me that he was looking strange so, with a face mask so in a university environment. Uh, so, so now wh so we're gonna, what has happened is that, yes, yes. So yeah. we're, we're gonna, what you're saying, yeah. and Dr. Lucci also said the same, we have to pay a lot more attention to our personal indeed, responsibility indeed, indeed. in this crisis. Act, so thank, you, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Tuyime Bawadu. Uh, Thank you. public health physician. And so that's our program today. Um, do what you can. Just do everything you can to, you know, keep yourself safe, keep your immune system up, whichever way you can. The doctor said it might be from eating right. It might also be from supplements, but just do what you can. Now that's our program today. Um, you know, we'll be back tomorrow, God willing, with a fresh edition. I'm Yori Folani. Bye-bye for now.